This is Reliance Countdown to Kickoff. Hi everyone, welcome to Countdown to Kickoff. I'm Melinda Spaulding. And I'm Jonathan Martin. Every month we are bringing you the most exciting updates from across the city leading up to the big game, which will be played here in Houston and airing on Fox 26. We are here at the Hilton Americas Houston, which is in downtown Houston. And this is where a lot of the action will take place during Super Bowl week, from concerts to football themed games. Yeah, it really is party central. And our Tom Ziska is showing us how this area has transformed since 2004. That's when Houston last hosted the Super Bowl. And and he's also showing us how it will be more than ready for the big game fun. If it's been a while since your last visit to downtown Houston, you may not recognize it the next time you come. From a one-time expanse of endless parking lots, it has been transformed to hotels, residential areas, a vital green oasis at the center, and of course, the George R. Brown Convention Center. With Super Bowl 51 on its way, the changes keep coming. It is a time for people in the city to come together to celebrate and to enjoy really the assets that we have. Good morning, how are y'all? Peter McStravick is the chief development officer for Houston First. So the area directly in front of us will be what, an area that we refer to as the wharf. He wants downtown to become a destination, not just for out of towners, but locals as well. That's why four new restaurants, a live music venue, a sports bar are among the attractions being added here. This is a great destination for people, for families to come, not only to come to Discovery Green and enjoy, but also to share and to experience the retail they were putting in. Discovery Green hosted 600 events last year with more than a million and a half visitors. Just a warm up for next year when Super Bowl week is looking to bring more than a million people itself. We've never had anything that's been this large and that has lasted as long as Super Bowl Live will. Super Bowl Live is the free fan festival leading up to the big game. It will take over the park for 10 days. We are kind of party central for Super Bowl Live that'll be happening here. And it's gonna be a really an opportunity for Houstonians to kind of gather together and to really celebrate the city and and the fact that we are hosting Super Bowl 51. But the city is hoping to continue drawing visitors and Houston residents well beyond the Super Bowl. Discovery Green President Barry Mandel says he is excited for the transformation of downtown because it is nothing like the place he remembers growing up. I mean, I'm a native Houstonian, and the fact that all of this is happening in downtown, it just still astounds me. We were encouraged as children never to go downtown because we were told nothing good happens downtown. And that is not at all what today's downtown is like. As someone who really loves to eat, I'm so excited about those new restaurants opening up later this year. You know I love a good meal. Yeah. And with all the action happening here in downtown Houston, many people are already getting a headache thinking about the traffic. Michelle Murhar shows us how Metro and the host committee are working together to make it easy and painless. Houstonians are, of course, excited for the big game to come in February, but many are worried about the one thing we just can't get rid of and only gets worse. Traffic. Luckily, the Super Bowl host committee is making preparations with the help of Metro. Our message is plan ahead, know where you're going, you know, before you leave the house. And, uh, and so the Metro, um, you know, infrastructure is key to making that happen. Tom Lambert, the company's president and CEO, says his team is more than ready. It's been since 2004 since we hosted the last Super Bowl, and a lot of positive things have happened in our community and have happened at Metro since then, so we want to show that off. In 2004, just 12 years ago, Metro only had seven and a half miles of rail and 18 rail cars. Today, that's expanded to 23 miles and 74 rail cars. Every day, we probably carry about 65,000 people, 65,000 boardings a day on the rail system, and that's continued to grow. But 65,000 doesn't compare to the million plus expected come Super Bowl week. We have a lot of opportunities to move people, whether it's a very high quality rail system, a very high frequency bus network, 
a 100 mile HOV network. Without light rail, without uh, the circulators and the connectors and the busing system that Metro does, I mean, you don't, you don't execute events like this. And uh, so the, uh, the NFL and the Final Four group, I mean, they appreciate that, they know that, and they pay attention to that when they're choosing locations, and now we just need to execute. The NFL has chosen Houston, so if you want to enjoy the big game fun, plan ahead. Use Metro's Ride Planner or Metro's app, because you don't want to get stuck in a sea of taillights when Metro could carry you straight to the end zone. It's an organization that values the opportunity to serve, and that's what we're looking to do uh, for the Super Bowl, but we're doing that every day. This segment is sponsored by Houston Metro. Okay, Jonathan, it's time now for our Super Bowl trivia. Here is the first question. How many cities in their surrounding areas have hosted the Super Bowl? A, 32, B, 15, C, 26, or D, 11? The answer when we come back. So how many cities in their surrounding areas have hosted the Super Bowl? The answer is B. Only 15 cities in their surrounding areas have hosted the big game. It will be the third time for Houston come February. Last month, our Rita Garcia showed us how to volunteer for the Super Bowl. Well, today she's showing us how Reliance President Elizabeth Killinger is making sure her team is volunteering too. As the chair of the volunteer committee for the Super Bowl host committee, Killinger knows it's not just about powering up the bright lights of NRG Stadium or even your big screen TV at home. She knows it's about powering up the community. What are y'all hoping to do? Anybody have a, a thing that they're hoping to do in volunteering? I hope to be a, a team lead. Um, because I'm a mom, I can kind of corral people, <laughs> get them to do what I want them to do, um, it, to make a positive impact. So I hope to do something like that. Great. Maggie, Corey, and Dina, three of the 3,000 Reliant and NRG employees currently working in the Houston area. They work in different departments with one big goal in common. All of them are hoping to become a Super Bowl volunteer. They've already been through the interview process and are waiting to see if they'll be one of the 10,000 applicants selected. Well, we're excited that you've chosen to volunteer and to be a part of this. Elizabeth Killinger is president of NRG Retail and Reliant. She's been with the company 15 years and says it's no surprise many on her staff are eager to volunteer since they already have the energy to serve a million customers in Texas with electricity and home security. It's in the, in the DNA of who we we are at Reliant and NRG to make a difference and really be the hands and feet in the community to help people and helping people will be really important when we have so many visitors who don't know where to go. Reliant employees will light the way for more than a million visitors who are expected come February. The company will also power NRG Stadium for the big game and while it's exciting for Killinger, a fourth generation Texan, she says it's more than just about protecting and simplifying lives. People in Houston are are, are interested in giving and making a difference and sharing that Houston hospitality with visitors from around the world. That means when Super Bowl 51 is over, Reliant will have given more to families than just power. Protecting and simplifying consumer lives, both at home and at work, and even on the go, especially when they're at Super Bowl 51. This segment is sponsored by Reliant. What a great group there. It really is about the community. Absolutely. All right, it's time now for your next trivia question, and we promise you it's not a trick question. What was the first Super Bowl called? A, Super Bowl, B, the big game, C, the AFC-NFC World Championship, or D, the AFL-NFL World Championship? So what was the first Super Bowl called? The answer is D, the AFL-NFL World Championship game. The championship match didn't gain the name until the third Super Bowl game. Did you know that one of the players in the first Super Bowl or the AFL-NFL championship game lives right here in Houston? That's right, our Angela Chin sat down with one of our local history makers, Andy Rice. Only a handful of people in America have been on this stage. The proven, the pinnacle, the final ones in the Super Bowl. You got to play that day the best you can, you know, because you got to play that day. You don't get another chance at that. You don't get another chance at that. Andy Rice was under those white hot lights when it all started, the first Super Bowl in 1967. We had no idea. I mean, you couldn't put it in our head 
that this thing would grow to what it is today. It was the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Green Bay Packers played in Los Angeles. Rice was the defensive tackle for the Chiefs, and he knew they were playing for something bigger than the trophy. They all did, but it wasn't enough. I didn't sleep hardly for, for three days after we lost that game. Ultimately, the Packers took it, winning 35-10 to 10 over the Chiefs. The thing that I, when I walked off that field, that's what I said to myself. I mean, I was half crying because I know I would never get another chance to, to, as to come in as the first Super Bowl against the NFL and win. It was crushing for Rice, but he used it as fuel, going on to play for the Houston Oilers, Cincinnati Bengals, San Diego Chargers, and Chicago Bears before hanging up his cleats in the early 70s. From there, he coached at Aldean Senior High School, taking them to a national championship. The kids became his life. I couldn't get out of bed and go to work fast enough. You're going to fall in love with them, they're going to fall in love with you. All his time became devoted to helping high school kids, even off the field. He'd been there and knew sometimes that football was a way out. I come from a poor family. There's no way I would have been able to go to college unless I got a football scholarship. And in the 60s, it was tough. Not all schools wanted black athletes, even if they were talented. I got a scholarship to visit Prairie View and a scholarship to visit Texas Southern because, you know, the white schools, they were not recruiting us back in those days. Dismissed by racial conventions of the time, Rice's life changed when Texas Southern took a chance on him with a full scholarship. For Andy, football lifted him out, gave him a way in, and let him give back. These days, Andy spends retired life in spring, and instead of being watched on TV, he's doing the watching. And despite all the teams he's played on, he's only got eyes for one come the day of Super Bowl 51. They're hoping to use them Texans all the way. Go Texans, go Texans all the way. I bleed it. In Houston, Angela Chen. Just an incredible story there, and just awesome to hear how the game has changed his life. It's changed a lot. All right, from one former NFL player to another, Greg Grugan tells us how former Texan Wade Smith is teaming up with the Houston Super Bowl host committee to leave a lasting legacy of early literacy. At a Northeast Houston elementary school, Kids file into a cafeteria, excited to meet their special guests. When I was like five, four, five, six, seven years old. It's former Texans player Wade Smith and his friends, who are here to inspire them not to play football, but to read. We go out to different elementary schools throughout the city of Houston and uh, talk to the kids about the importance of reading and, and how much it can open their minds to so many different opportunities and how cool it is. The Wade Smith Foundation has been doing this for years. It's a program called Reading with the Pros. We get a bunch of, you know, current and former NFL players. We'll get, you know, we have doctors here today. We have Miss Texas here today, uh, professional baseball players, uh, WNBA players, just people from all walks of life that have been successes and just talk to them about our love for reading and it gets the kids excited about it as well. But this particular stop is extra special because these kids are also getting a little Super Bowl treatment. It's National Literacy Month. We really felt like this was the right time for us to launch our legacy initiative around early literacy. Have you guys ever had a food fight before? No. I hope not. It's part of the Houston Super Bowl host committee's charitable giving program. It's about giving back to the kids and everyone needs to be involved. Our goal with our legacy initiative is to recruit 5,100 volunteers who will either donate time, money, or books. Um, and so we'll be sharing more information about how that can happen as we continue to have more events in the community. The priority, to get students reading at grade level by the third grade. <laughs> Love to see those kids so fired up about reading. For sure. Okay, so let's see if you were paying attention. Who won the first Super Bowl? A, the Oakland Raiders, B, Kansas City Chiefs, C, Green Bay Packers, or D, Baltimore Colts? We'll have the answer coming up. So who won the first Super Bowl? The answer is C the Green Bay Packers. The first Super Bowl was held on January 15, 1967. The Packers defeated Kansas City 35 to 10. That was at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Well, since we're here at the Hilton America's Houston in downtown Houston, we have to check out the presidential suite. And who better to show us the life of the rich and famous than our very own Ruben Dominguez. 
All right, guys, we can't let you go without showing you this magnificent room here at the Hilton Americas. This is the presidential suite. More than 1,900 feet of luxurious living, views that are absolutely fit for a king. Depending on where you sit in the room, you can actually see the sun rise and set. That's how incredible the views are. Right now, it's set up for a master bed. It's also got one and one half bath and all the accoutrements that you need to enjoy Super Bowl week in Houston. It is the perfect party room. Beautiful views of Discovery Green and enough space to throw one heck of a Super Bowl party. For your viewing pleasure, three, count them, three flat screen TVs, including one in the bathroom. Because if you're like me, sometimes I like a little bubble bath with my football game. So whether you got tickets to the big game or you're gonna be stepping out to one of the many parties in downtown Houston during Super Bowl week, the Hilton Americas, the presidential suite, one of the best places to stay. Thank you, Ruben, and he was the perfect person to give us that tour. I would agree with that. Now it's time to see a preview of Ruben's other top 26 suites. Well, welcome. You have arrived in one of our two penthouse suites. This room is 1,200 square feet, okay. and it was recently renovated by designers Mitchell Gold, Bob Williams. Very nice, very mm -hmm. nice. I gotta say, the view gets you right away. Mm -hmm. At night, it's spectacular. You've got Williams Tower all lit up, and you can see all of the Galleria. I love the furniture. <gasps> well, and I love, I love kind of cool chairs, too. I'm always, God, I'd love to have this in my house. Okay, Ruben, this is where the magic happens. I love it. This is the master bedroom. I think the coolest feature in here, though, is the bathroom. It's awesome. This is really probably the most impressive. Is wow. the size of this shower. You can have a party in that shower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There probably will be a party in that there shower. There could be a party in this shower, All absolutely. Right. All right, Ruben, you're not VIP at Hotel Derek until we bust out the champagne, sir. Some of the most luxurious hotel rooms in Houston also come with its own Tesla. Hey, Tom. Ruben, good to see you. Welcome to the Four Seasons. Thank you, sir. I hear you have a spectacular suite to show me. We want to show you our presidential suite that's uh, available during the Super Bowl. Let's see Come it. on in. Let's see it. Welcome in, Ruben. Here's our beautiful living room where you can rest and relax. While you're here for the weekend, you have to have a cocktail. Wow. We have our own bourbon baroness with from Bayou and Bottle, our new bar. Come on over to the dining room nice. where we have Prince here waiting for you for a butler for the weekend to enjoy your dining room. I need to show you the master bedroom, a beautiful king-size bed overlooking the city of Houston. And we even have your own Lucchese boots who will come in and fit your boots and make you personalized your boots during for the Super Bowl. And for the right price, with this presidential suite, you get to go to the game too. Cheers to Super Bowl 51 in Houston. Salud. Hey, Priscilla. Hey, welcome to Hotel Zaza. Thank you. I hear you have one of the most amazing hotel rooms in Houston. We definitely do. Let me show you Black Label. So this is one of the Magnificent Seven Suites. And here we have our living area. It's perfect for entertaining a huge group. Our master bedroom has a custom headboard and a custom mattress built for the high rollers. Here we have our double vanity sinks, perfect for a romantic night. And this is my favorite part about the Black Label Suite. I mean, this view. I can you, see why. Yeah, not a lot of people get to see this view. And we've you know, got, it's only missing one thing. What? Champagne. Got you covered. Thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget, we'll be doing Countdown to kick off every month leading up to the big game. Which you will be watching right here on Fox 26. And you can also keep up with us on our website, fox26.com, and follow us on social media at Fox 26 Houston. Have a great weekend, and go, go Texans! Texans.